Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing wonderfully well. Today we're in the Apache and we're looking at a really interesting aspect of it, that is threat detection, countermeasures and survival. We're looking at four main systems today, ASE, Aircraft Survival Equipment, RFI, Radar Frequency Interferometer, really interesting. RLWR, Radar and Laser Warning Receiver, and CMWS, Common Missile Warning System. As a rough overview, ASC really encompasses the three systems below. RFI is part of the Fire Control Radar Assembly, which listens for radar threats. RLWR listens for radar threats and laser threats and CMWS listens for the heat signals of incoming missiles. I'm pausing. We're airborne here with several threats around us. We'll focus on our usual MPDs here. So let's access the ASE screen. We're going to go to main menu and ASE as a very basic overview. ASE is showing threats from a top-down format. We are in the middle here. We are facing that way, behind, left, right. The circle shows our footprint. Just inside the circle shows up to seven threats, either radar-based or laser-based, detected by our RLWR. When our RFI is functional, my understanding is it's not functional yet, up to 10 radar threats will be shown around the outside of the circle. Note that threat symbology as well as shown on our ASE is also shown on our TSD. So why do you have two screens showing the same thing? Well it's nice having it on the TSD here but as you can see I've deliberately shown a very cluttered piece of the map. It's very hard to see certain threats. These naval threats are hard to see. There's one down here that I can't even see. It's covered up by symbology. So that's why you also have the ASE screen here which shows a stripped down decluttered version which allows you to really focus on the threats. So as we said, up to seven, <laughs> we're being shot at, right? Let's hope he doesn't hit. I'm sure he won't hit. Up to seven uh, threat symbologies will be shown on the inside as classified by our radar laser warning receiver. It's currently showing five out of interest. The RFI is an interesting thing. Let me show you. It's part of the MMA, the mast mounted assembly, this guy here. So it will only work, obviously, if you have that added to the aircraft. The mushroom head here is the fire control radar obviously allows you to search and shoot at targets. The RFI is a little guy in here which listens for radar threats, classifies them and will actually allow us to target those threats to a certain degree but for what we're interested in today we just need to know that it will display up to 10 radar threats on the outside of the circle. In terms of the threat symbologies, I think we'll come back to that in a minute. Let's just do some other parts of this uh, ASE screen. So first, obviously, we have chaff and flare, and to dispense flares, we have that, and to dispense chaff, we have that. We can arm the chaff dispensing system here, assuming we're airborne, either armed or or safe. How do we want to dispense the chaff in preset programs or as single manual chaff when we press the button and we'll go over the programs? How many chaff cartridges do we have on the aircraft at the moment? Currently 30. We have our current magnetic heading there and our current command heading to our selected point of interest here we show our threat quantity. The RLWR is currently detecting five threats. When the RFI is active, it will show how many threats it detects there. Auto paging, we have an option here of what level of threat is needed to trigger the auto paging. If you remember, what auto paging means is when an event happens, it will automatically force a certain screen onto one of your MPDs. So let's say we've got the fire control radar here and we've got something else non-related here. Let's say engines over here on the right. If one of these threats is triggered, it will automatically, the TSD, not the ASE, but the TSD here will show up on one of the MPDs. In terms of threat level, does it have to be a search, which is our default? It will then automatically put our TSD up or an acquisition threat whoops or a track threat or have no auto paging at all we'll just leave that there 
Now is probably a good time to look at the actual threat symbology so we understand that. It's pretty simple and I found it quite difficult to make a mission that shows them all off. So just very roughly, we can see there's an SA-6 here. It's flashing, so it's shooting at us. Uh, we can see there's an airborne threat here, an F-15, naval threat here and here, and on, on our 4 o'clock, a uh, searching SA-6. Let's look at that in more detail. I've got this uh, excerpt here from the user manual. If a new threat is detected for a few seconds, it will be shown with a bold triangle, assuming it's a ground threat. In this case, it is an SA-15. Otherwise, the radar, assuming it's in a search mode, will be shown as a non-bold triangle here. In this case, again, an SA-15 surface system. Then, if the radar is in a track mode, it shows as an extra box around it. This SA-6 here is in track mode at the moment. It will also have a dotted line to us, the guy it's actually tracking. And if they launch a missile, if the system detects continuous wave signals, which could be guiding a missile, then it will be flashing, as you saw before. But beware. For this to really make sense, you have to understand various types of SAMs or threats that may be firing against you. So an SA-6, as you know, needs to be able to track us, to be able to fire at us, and then uses continuous wave radiation, uh, this guy here, to guide its missile. Now, not all systems need that. An SA-19 Tunguska, for instance, would use its search radar to find us, but it doesn't need to get a track, and it doesn't need to use continuous wave. It could actually launch and guide its missile without either of these. So understanding how much danger you're in is just as much about understanding the threats, the type of SAMs that may be firing at you. Uh, airborne threats has a kind of chevron or a V here and you can see F-15 radar there or MiG-29 radar there. If a threat is lost then the symbology will go dark for 10 seconds and then finally disappear. That's radars, but we also have uh, lasers. Some threats or missiles or dangers will be laser guided rather than radar guided. An example of this is, well, another Apache could not have a radar on, but it could still launch a Hellfire at you using its laser. The same with Russian helicopters and some ground units. So if a laser rangefinder is active, then you'll get this signal here and it will obviously show up on the correct radial. If it's designating you, it will show with a dotted line. And again, if it's being used to guide a missile in like a Hellfire or a Viking missile, then it will be flashing again. Really useful because threats, as we said before, are not just radar or semi-radar, they could be a laser. But Hark, at this point you say, what about missiles that are not laser or radar? What about SACLOS missiles? What about passive infrared missiles? They won't show up in here at all. Don't worry because the Apache has you covered. It has another system, the CMWS, which can detect that kind of threat. So it's really well covered for defending itself. Right, so we'll get rid of that. Uh, let's carry on. Uh, most screens, as you know, on the Apache have a util page, so we'll quickly blast over that. Uh, we've got these two guys here as before. We also have the ability to program our chaff release program. It's pretty much the same as in every modern aircraft. We can choose the burst count. That is how many chaff cartridges are expended per burst, let's say three. We've also got the time between each of those three cartridges in decimal seconds. Each burst of three cartridges forms a salvo. How many salvos do you want? I want two. And how many seconds or a random amount of seconds between each salvo? Let's say two. So if I were to press the chaff button now, it would fire three cartridges at every 0.3 seconds and it would do that whole thing twice with two seconds between each salvo. Uh, we also have the amount of chaff cartridges remaining here and strangely you can actually press it here and go to the keyboard unit in the left and type it in manually but I don't understand why you would want to do that. I'm sure you guys will let me know with that. One thing I'm not showing off viewers is the voice. So everything we've seen so far in here also has verbal warnings. A lovely lady tells us that SA6 tracking 12 o'clock, uh, SA6 search 4 o'clock, naval search 9 o'clock and so on. I've turned the sounds off I do at the moment because I struggle to compete with the sounds because I have a really bad voice at the moment. Uh, but I'm sure you all know what I mean. We can configure that to a certain extent. We can't change her voice per se, but we can change what she says. We can, for instance, either have normal or terse. With normal, she will include more information. If you go to terse, she will include less information in that sentence. And regards the radar laser warning receiver system, we can have it all off or all on.
Don. Uh, so that concludes the ASC and its relationship to the TSD. Now, I mentioned earlier that what if a missile is being fired at you that is not laser guided, it's not radar guided. Well, that's where this guy comes in, the Common Missile Warning System Control Panel. What it does is it's a passive system that detects the heat of a incoming missile. Not necessarily incoming, but just a missile that's within its catchment of detection. Interestingly, this was a bolt on extra to the Apache added, as you can kind of see with the uh, kind of rustic bolts and stuff like that, and it had to be patched in through an existing system. The basic controls are super simple, as I'm sure you know. You can turn it off or you can turn it on and it will do a small warm up or you can do a built in test there. This has no function apparently. I should say this detection system also has the lady voice warning you again. Sorry, I'm not showing it off. I'll maybe add something at the end of the video. The intensity of the display, we'll come back to the display in a minute. Uh, regards flares only, are they armed or are they safe? Let's keep them armed. The system, as I said, was a bolt on extra. It's patched in through the automatic direction finding, a part of the navigation system. So you have a toggle switch here. Do you want to hear audio from the MWS here, or do you want to hear audio from the ADF navigation system? The general rule is if you're not navigating on ADF, keep it in here so you can listen to any threats. Next, how do we want to release our flare cartridges? Bypass means one press of the flare button releases one flare, or auto. This is an interesting thing, an intelligence system where the MWS makes its own decision based on threat incoming missiles that it detects. It will put out its own flares. Now you have to use this responsibly. If you're flying through an area where various missiles are being launched, not even necessarily at you, the missiles will be detected by the MWS and it will launch flares and it will happily launch all 60 in a few seconds. So most of the time you probably have this on bypass and you listen to the threat system here and you'll make your own decisions about when to launch, but it's really up to you. If in an emergency you want to jettison all of your flares, you can do that there and there's no reason to do that in DCS. Finally, the display. How many flare cartridges we have how many chaff cartridges we have an r here saying that the flare launcher is armed and ready a d here dispensing if we're currently dispensing chaff or flare cartridges d will show here and our radial of threat when the mws detects a missile threat in the air bear in mind it doesn't know what that missile is it doesn't know if it's friendly it doesn't even really know which direction it's going but it can tell you the direction from us if it's forward and right then this quadrant will show and so on so you get a rough idea of where the missile is coming from which leads us on to how useful is this system now when i operate the apache i operate with a bunch of friendly apaches or a10s or whatever in a very complex theater and the reality is someone's always firing off a missile whether friendly or hostile or whatever and like I said the system doesn't really understand what the threat is it just detects a missile and tells you and like I said it might start flaring for you as well and what you end up with is just overload where this thing is constantly beeping and you have no idea whether it's relevant or not so in a complex theater i just tend to ignore it to be honest and look for threats myself if you're operating alone obviously it's incredibly useful because you know those threats are probably going to be aimed at you uh, and that's it viewers like i said excellent platform incredibly well protected probably the best aircraft in dcs i think for protection and detection we've got excellent detection from radar and extra coming up in terms of the RFI. We've got excellent protection from lasers and laser threats and we've got excellent protection from all missiles uh, whether using guidance signals or not. I hope that was useful and bye-bye.